Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the SWAN Analytical Instruments webinar, A Better Way to Measure Cation Conductivity. Our speaker today is Randy Turner, Technical Director of SWAN Analytical USA. Randy was a chemist for a Southern Company for over 33 years, plant chemist for 17 years, and corporate chemist for 16 plus years, supporting their entire fleet of fossil plants. Upon retirement from Southern Company, he joined Swan Analytical as our technical director in January 2012. Over his career, Randy has authored and presented numerous papers on power plant chemistry at conferences and has also authored or co-authored many papers published in industrial journals. Uh, in our webinar today, we're using our uh, GoToWebinar software. Wanted to give you a quick guide to the software, how it works, and how you can interact with us. Uh, you should see a control panel, such as the one on the screen to the right here. Uh, you can select computer audio or phone, uh, depending on how you've uh, joined the webinar. You can minimize that panel by clicking the orange tab, the arrow to the right, uh, that giving yourself access to the full screen and uh, a good view of the display and the presentation that Randy will be taking us through. Uh, you probably have noted all our attendees are muted. We do that to minimize background noise, um, but we do welcome your feedback and input. Uh, in the webinar control panel, you'll see a, uh, a box noted questions, a panel called questions. Um, if you have any uh, questions, feedback, or uh, other concerns, feel free to type those in. Uh, I'll be uh, monitoring that and uh, we'll pass those questions along to Randy to answer at the end of the webinar. Uh, so with that, I'm going to put myself on mute and hand the presentation over to Randy. Uh, thank you for attending today. Good morning, everyone. We're uh, very excited to uh, have you join us for this webinar. As Dominic said, we're going to be discussing a better way to measure cation conductivity. And as you can see, according to EPRI, cation conductivity is a core monitoring parameter for steam, boil water, condensate, feed water, and can be used to indirectly assess the levels of chlorides and sulfates present for corrosion avoidance purposes. Cation conductivity, acid conductivity, and case are all terms referring to the measurement of cation or conductivity after cation exchange. The sample passes through a cation ion exchanger to remove the alkalizing agent and convert the remaining trace PPB level salts to their corresponding acid. And the value of that is the acid is on average three to five times more conductive than the salt, making it much easier to detect the presence of contaminants. So what you see here is the process of measuring cation conductivity. The sample coming into the cation exchanger will contain your dissociated water. The predominant species present will be your alkalizing agent, in this case ammonia, and then the trace contaminants such as sodium chloride. The sample passes through the cation ion exchanger here to the left, as you see. And the effluent of the cation exchanger, the sample will be changed to what you see in this second box. The, the ammonia is removed. The water, of course, is unchanged. And the salt is converted to hydrochloric acid. So you have an excess of acid, which you measure with the conductivity cell. Areas where you typically would monitor cation conductivity to determine the presence of corrosive contaminants and to help identify where the contaminant is entering into the steam water cycle are samples such as condensate pump discharge or hot well. Condensate polisher, individual vessel outlet, should you have condensate polishers. Also, you may monitor the combined polisher outlet, your economizer inlet or feed water, boiler water or boiler blowdown, 
steam, typically either main steam or reheat steam. And you may have some additional sampling points for troubleshooting. At this point, we're going to take a quick poll. And what we'd like to know is, how are you measuring cation conductivity? Is this a measurement that you take at many places in your plant? Are you not doing cation conductivity? Um, if you could just take a quick second to uh, select one of the answers on the screen and submit that. OK, we're seeing some votes come in. And give it just a couple more seconds for people who are checking the diagram and thinking about their own plant and how it goes. OK, we're going to close that up and share that with you. And as you can see, um, the majority of uh, power plants do measure at um, uh, some point, or excuse me, most power plants measure at some point, many two to five, and even a few at uh, more than 10. So thank you very much for your feedback. And uh, we'll hand the presentation back over to Randy. Thank you. OK. In applying electrodeionization ion exchanger, which replaces the traditional resin cation exchanger, which eliminates frequent resin changes, reduces O&M cost, and eliminates gap in your data. However, there are certain important questions which need to be answered in the use of this technology, such as, will EDI give the exact same readings as traditional ion exchange? Are the readings reproducible under identical chemical conditions and between different EDI devices? Is EDI technology as reliable and as sensitive as conventional resin method? Is EDI suitable under all relevant conditions, such as specific conductivity, sample temperature, different alkalizing agents, and impurities? And what will be the maintenance interval for e the EDI unit, uh, which we estimate to be five years? Okay, what you see here is uh, the EDI module explained. You have your sample coming in here containing your alkalizing agent and trace contaminants. It passes through the specific conductivity sensor where specific conductivity is measured. Then it passes through the resin module in the EDI unit where it exchanges hydrogens for the ammonium ions and for the uh, cations on the salts such as sodium chloride. Uh, the sodium is replaced with a hydrogen. Once it passes through the resin module, the cation conductivity is measured. Also, during the EDI process, there is water electrolysis. The sample water purges the cathode and the anode. And at the anode, water is split into hydrogen ions and oxygen ions. And this source of hydrogen ions that are formed at the anode, they will pass through the membrane and it drives the sodium and ammonium ions off of the resin and replaces the hydrogens. Therefore, it is regenerating itself during the measurement process. What you see here is a flow path for the analyzer, your sample is coming in here, flows through the specific conductivity cell. Then the sample flows through the EDI module where the uh, alkalizing agent and the salts are converted to their acid. Then the sample flows through the cation conductivity sensor where the cation conductivity is measured. Then through our flow monitoring device then it flows through and purges the cathode and anode compartments and it goes to waste 
What you see here is a side view of the EDI module. At the top is the flow chamber for the specific and cation conductivity sensors. As we mentioned earlier, water is electrolyzed, forming hydrogen and oxygen. Therefore, a degassing coil is required, which you see here. This is the cathode holder. Here's the anode holder. This is the chamber containing the resin and the membrane. And here at the very top is the adapter plate with the electronics and contacts for the EDI module. What you see here is the EDI module disassembled. Here you have a protective membrane to protect the membrane and resin from mechanical and chemical stress. Your sample comes into here. Here is the degassing outlet port. There is a resin filter in the membrane module to avoid resin escaping the module. And here's a resin charging hole. This is the resin contained inside the cation exchange membrane. And then the sample exits here. Using EDI technology, the traditional resin cation exchanger is placed with a cation electrodeionization ion exchanger, which provides accurate, reliable, gap-free data, reduces your O&M cost. Here's the technical specifications for the uh, instrument. Uh, the capacity of the EDI module, it has 1.4 millimole per liter of cation exchange capacity, uh, operate at 40 microsiemens with ammonia, which is approximately 24 parts per million ammonia, and as much as 350 microsiemens with sodium hydroxide. It measures the specific and the cation conductivity. Therefore, the pH is calculated by differential conductivity as well as the ammonia concentration is calculated. Regarding the question, is it reproducible from instrument to instrument? What you see in this graph here is a, a sample being monitored by three different EDI units represented by the three different colors. And as you can see, it is consistent reproducible. With respect to the chemistry in which you employ, will this technology work well for um, various alkalizing agents? Uh, over the past three years, customers have used uh, alkalizing agents such as ammonia, cyclohexylamine, ethanolamine, hydrazine, and morphine. Pros and cons of the EDI case versus traditional resin are shown here. Uh, the pros of the EDI versus traditional resin is greater reliability due to self-regeneration of the resin, great availability due to self-regeneration of the resin, reduced operating cost, reduced waste and disposal cost, reduced sample loss. The EDI case sample flow requirements are three to four liters per hour versus typically five to 10 liter per hour for traditional resin devices. Reduced labor costs and not having to change the resin frequently. Uh, both technologies can measure specific and canon conductivity, therefore calculate the pH and the ammonia concentration. Uh, the one con with the EDI based technology is the operator cannot change the resin module uh, inside the casing without training, which is not the case with the traditional uh, resin measurement devices. What are some of the restrictions for use? Well, the, we've already gone over the capacity of the EDI resin. Uh, module. And when you look, the specific conductivity for uh, ammonia is 40 microsiemens. However, as you can see in this graph, where the specific conductivity is along the bottom, 
here at 40 microsiemens, this region, it, it, it will operate with no issues. However, should you occasionally spike above 40 microsiemens or even operate routinely above 40 microsiemens, we have a buffer zone here from 40 to approximately 55, 60 microsiemens uh, before the EDI module cannot regenerate the resin as quickly as the influx of um, cations basically from the alkalizing agent. So you can actually operate in this region either temporarily or consistently with minimal risk of exhausting the resin. However, when you get into this region, you run the risk of exhausting the resin and having an inaccurate cation conductivity indicated. As we all know, resin can will degrade and can foul. So what comes in to the EDI must exit. It works very well for anions and cations entering into the module. It does not work well with particulates such as iron or sur surface active substances such as film forming amines and its friends. The particles in the film forming amine will stay in the chamber causing the voltage on the unit to rise and it can rise to the point of um, a fatal condition and the EDI module will shut down. Normal resin degradation is a slow process taking months to years, which determines the life of the EDI module resin. The resin service life is heavily dependent on the sample quality. What you see here are some pictures of new resin, iron fouled resin or organic fouled resin. The resin can be fouled by either iron or organics. And the particles such as iron, when they enter into the module over time will build up and restrict the flow. Therefore, we have a one micron filter to remove the iron to avoid iron fouling and plugging of the EDI module. What are the potential savings? Well, these are actual savings of a large power station with 2,350 megawatts of combined cycle power with seven steam turbines. They were spending uh, $1,350 per year for resin per cannon conductivity monitoring loop and $450 per year in labor for a total of $1,800 per year per cannon conductivity analyzer. And they had a total of 40 analyzers at this station. So their annual cost with traditional resin measurement technology is 72,000. When we amortize the cost of servicing the EDI module at $500 per year, three to five years with a total of 40 EDI Analyzers, the amortized cost per year is $20,000 for a potential savings of $52,000 per year at this one station alone. In conclusion, the Amy EDI case is more, is as or more accurate, precise, and reliable as traditional resin based measurement. It provides reduced operating cost in the form of reduced resin cost. The savings, of course, is dependent upon the operating pH and the capacity faster, factor. Reduced labor cost, less high purity water loss, and gap-free trend analysis.